this is deafness we are going to deal today a brief about the deafness and what are all the issues related to, to that electrode of cochlear implant is placed at so cochlear implant you know mechano uh, electromagnetic device okay which is there outside you know, external device and internal device external device and internal device external device is typically external device is typically you know is outside internal device is there in the on the mastoid bone like you have got microphone speech processor and transmitter microphone speech processor and transmitter you should have a basic idea about this one so as you all know before uh, telling itself i would like to tell about this one so this, this is the head and this is the ear as you could see over here so and then later on the cochlear implant is something which is kept over here and this is uh, something like a hearing aid only which is kept over here and internal device is something like this which is almost as you know this is a canal this is the middle ear and you have got the so uh, if you take the parts like that you can have something like i'm just uh, making it as simple as that one two three compartments scala vestibular scala media scala tympani so three parts external part is microphone speech processor and transmitter internal has got receptor and and uh, this particular electrode array so don't go into details of this you are not going to become cochlear implant surgeon just have a basic of this so these electrodes are more commonly placed in front of this so as you know the stapes will be in the scala vestibula in this particular region so these electrodes they will be going like this and then we placed inside the scala tympani scala tympani more commonly nowadays round window electrodes are also available so microphone just like a mic microphone speech processor speech processor transmitter okay and this is the electrode array electrode array electrode array the electrodes are there like 22 24 20, etc etc the details of which are not asked in the examinations so you just remember m s t r and e okay so this is about the cochlear implantation and if based on uh, the bit that we have got here so let's go to the bit here so most of the things most of the things are related to this understanding basic understanding only don't go into details and get confused just as simple as that round window oval window scala vestibular scala tympani scala tympani okay so as you could see the answer here would be what is b is oval window is it or not oval window will be over here okay this will be the round window so it is going through the scala tympani so in front of the round window you are going to dig something and then do a cortical mastectomy in front of the round window you produce a cochleostomy something called as cochleostomy people might have heard about krishnaostomy this is cochleostomy just simple like that okay cochleostomy this is a cochleostomy that we do here at this particular point just simply remember that so microphone signal processing chip that is speech processor connecting cable this is external device this is the transmitter this is the receiver so this is the receiver and this is the electrode array so this is r is for the receiver which i did not write here over so this is the receiver r e c i e v c receiver and this is the electrode array so it is going through that and then fitting inside it so if the outer edges are not functioning properly and we are going to replace it with the help of this cochlear implant so cochlear implant is the external portion external portion of the device so uh, which includes a microphone speech processor based uh, sp and radio frequency transmitter coil implanted portion of the cochlear implant has a receiver coil microprocessor based stimulator and multi channel electrode array so so don't go into deep details of everything just remember these basics so these are external place like a hearing aid and these are the internally placed one okay next so electrode is inserted 25 mm into the cochlea scala tympani so st so third compartment as you remember scala vestibular media and tympani have an idea about this everybody is very much confused about this cochlear implant so this is v this is m this is t tympani so remember it is there like that device is fixed to the bone with non absorbable sutures so external device you can remove and then place it again because there is a magnet here you can attach it like that okay so don't discuss among yourself try to concentrate on this one okay so few bits which are of important uh, ideal candidates for cochlear implant so better the earliest you recognize them the best will be the result like having severe to profound sensory neural deafness in both the ears so more than 
91 decibels profound deafness more than 91 decibels as you can see more than 91 decibels profound deafness you can have it more than 91 severe means 71 to 91 severe means 71 to 91 decibels we all discuss this is pewton audiometry and all based on the coming things okay having severe to profound so sensory neural deafness having a functional auditory nerve so for this the auditory nerve has to be there so whatever that is coming from the this particular scarpa's ganglion it has to form as a nerve and it forms as a cochlear nerve is it or not so cochlear nerve is a must cochlear nerve is a must to have that in mind so cochlear nerve is a must to have that in mind so next thing is having a functional auditory nerve approximately 70 plus decibel hearing loss having a good speech language and communication skills not benefiting enough from other kinds of hearing aids so not benefiting enough from other kinds of hearing aids of course these are all like arbitrary most of the time they will ask you because this is a super specialty concept they will not completely stress you but this, this is important st is very important here so as you could see so this is the puton audiometry graph is it or not puton audiometry graph um, so now this is from vertical axis this is the horizontal axis horizontal axis and vertical axis so how do you want to know about the puton audiometry the basics of these things okay basics of these things you want to know here so some people are asking about this so let us see the quiet basics of this puton audiometry in just few glimpses you will understand everything so vertical in the temple the bell is vertically placed it is vertical so horizontal is frequency so bell is vertically placed therefore it will be decibel so db it is seen in decibels bell is vertically placed horizontal is frequency horizontal is frequency just as simple as that so you right and left as you could see right and left okay as you could see in the person the here will be right and left okay as you could see so o and dox this is right and this is left just basic symbols like this okay basic symbols like this so what would you do is so the difference between these two ears for example if you are giving a sound here and this is passing the other ear and that particular thing requires masking that is more than 40 decibels so 40 decibels is the one between the two ears okay so once you are giving this right ear and the left ear is functioning and listening and giving a result then you should do something called as masking don't think too much about masking right now just keep it aside so more than 40 decibels okay so what you are going to do is dotted is bone conduction dotted is bone conduction full line is air conduction full line is air conduction just remember like that so from 0 10 20 30 40 50 etc etc till what level you want you can put and minus 10 also you are putting so these are the decibel levels decibel levels that your sound you are giving so the one who is hearing better will be on the top of the graph just basically telling you about the one who better will be here in the top of the graph the one who becomes worst will be going down and down down and down so for example you are taking tracing the graph for right side for example you are putting it like 0 0 0 0 air connection and bone connection like that okay so keep symbols aside so what is bone connection is is in a dotted lines right now okay dotted lines right now so normally you can consider till the level of 25 till the level of 25 decibels it can be considered as normal or you can consider as from 15 as normal 25 as minimal minimal if you consider this as minimal hearing loss the worst of the graph which sinks down and down so if you want to give 90 decibels more than 90 decibels if the graph is coming here for example it should be called as profound deafness you can just say it as profound deafness. A difference of opinion occurs between the books so you can call it as profound deafness so severe is 71 till the level of 91 you can say profound deafness okay severe is here severe so this is something like who classification so normal is like 15 in normal 25 is like this so how would you understand a conductive deafness Conductive deafness means going through the air, he is not able to listen. Going through the bone, he is able to listen. Okay. Going through the air, he is not able to listen. Going through the bone, he is able to listen. So, then how you understand this conductive deafness? Basically, I am not going to very details of this. So, this is not a professional lecture. This is a basic lecture which is to be understood. Okay. So, there is something called as this is bone conduction, this is air conduction. Air conduction is getting worse and worse. Bone is better, air is okay. air is uh, worst, bone is better. So what is the gap between it is called as A B gap. A B air bone gap is there. You can call it as conductive deafness. Conductive deafness. Conductive deafness. Okay. 
So, sensory neural hearing loss is uh, like measuring the function of cochlea. You are putting some vibrating tuning for here, you are not able to hear means your cochlea is not responding for that. So, that is called as sensory neural hearing loss, sensory neural hearing loss. So, in that situation, for example, bone conduction has become worst and air conduction is also worst. So, air bone gap is very much minimal, air bone gap is very much minimal, very much minimal. So, that can be called as sensory neural hearing loss, sensory neural hearing loss. So, in a nutshell, you can say that broad gauge train track like appearance is something called as conductive deafness. So, very narrow gauge is like sensory neural hearing loss. Normal also will be nearer. For example, bone conduction like this and air conduction like this, this will become like a normal. Because they are nearer to 0 decibels, nearer to 0 decibels, the grass is in upper portion of the PTA, it can be called as normal. If the graph is sinking, it can be called as low sensory neural hearing loss. In the same way, if the graph is sinking, if the graph is sinking and has airborne gap, it can be called as mixed hearing loss. If the graph is sinking and has got airborne gap, so graph is falling and airborne gap is also there, it can be called as mixed hearing loss, mixed hearing loss. Just these are the basics, white basics, I am not going to details of everything, okay. So details of everything, uh, like uh, as per WHO, what should be the value of deafness as per WHO, it is not like value of deafness, it is like mild, moderate, severe. If it is less than 15, it is normal. 0 to 15 is normal. 15 to 25 minimal. Next to 25 to 40. So mild, moderate, moderate, severe, severe, total profound. Profound comes to nearly, like I told you, more than 90 decibels. It is just like a, please repeat this again. Okay, snowbar one, please repeat this again. So just in a fast transit, I am repeating. Why? Because to understand, for the people to understand. So leave about right and left and symbols, everything like that. Bone conduction. Just remember 0 is normal, 0 to 15 is normal, this is normal, you think like that. Normally, normally in, PT, in, in the tuning force, air conduction is greater than bone conduction. But this is tuning force, this is tuning force, TFTs, TFT air conduction better than bone conduction. But in PTA, most of the times based on calibration, bone conduction is better than air conduction, the graph is like that. So normal PTA, the graph will be something like this. So no air bone gap. So, this is BC, this will be AC, this will be called as normal graph, remember like normal, this is normal, this is normal. For example, if both air conduction and bone conduction are sinking, for example, to this level, to this worst level, so with minimal air bone gap, so bone is also gone, bone gone means bone conduction is something related to SNHL, remember like that, something related to SNHL. So, both are gone means it is something related to SNHL. Bone conduction is normal, that means no SNHL, but air conduction has dipped down. So, this is bone conduction, this is air conduction has dipped down, you can call it as air bone gap. For example, if air bone gap is less, more than 15 to 20 decibels, so this gap is 15 to 20 decibels, you can call it as conductive hearing loss, conductive hearing loss. And for one more example, if there is bone conduction worst and air conduction also worst, there is air bone gap. Air bone gap with bone conduction bad, this is bone conduction which has dipped down, air conduction also dipped down, then you can call it as mixed hearing loss, mixed hearing loss. So, one person, I have repeated this one, I hope you have uh, understood the concept. So, like a narrow gauge which is very nearer, it is normal. Like a narrow gauge which is falling down, it is sensory neural hearing loss. Like a broad gauge which is not falling down, it is conductive hearing loss. Like a broad gauge which is falling down, it can be called as mixed hearing loss. This ends the, this ends the pure tone audiometry understanding. Basically, this is not 100% of pure tone audiometry, I am just telling you about that. So, based on this understanding, let us see the graph that is given over there. Let us see the graph that is given over there. 